Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room. Uh, and today's subject is gonna be around the ever so frustrating follows that you get from Pike. So we've probably all experienced this. It is insanely frustrating. Certain days you just can't seem to induce a bite and you get follow after the follow to the bank or the boat. Um, it, you know, effectively, you just end up running out of water. You can often see them coming from a bit longer, a bit further away, and you're thinking, oh, just take, just take, just take, and they won't, and then they follow right up underneath your feet. They normally see you, see the bank, see the boat, they'll turn and they just abort, all right? So here's a few tips on how to try and convert those follows into bites. First tip, good general rule of thumb this. If the water is less than 10 degrees and you're getting a lot of follows, slow your lure down. Think about fluttering a lot more, thinking about taking weight off your jig heads, Think about using slightly different lures so that you can present something much, much slower. Because if you think about it, by definition, the water's cold. They're not so interested that they're just sat there and they just watch your lure go by. They see something, they're interested enough to want to go and check it out. But then obviously they're not so interested that they then just smash it and give you a proper bite like they normally do. So they're kind of in that in-between stage. So you're gonna to have to adjust something to try and get them to bite. And generally, when the water is less than 10 degrees, I try and slow it down. So I'm really offering them a much, much easier meal so that they can become interested. I flick it around a little bit more, flutter it around a little bit more. And hopefully that, that slower presentation where it's just offered right in front of them will allow, a, you know, a turn it into a proper bite. Now, don't expect proper arm wrenches like you normally get from Pike. You, I, I'm expecting much more gentle bites because I know that they're, when, you know, when they've got to uh, chase a lure very, very quickly, which I'll come on to in a second, they tend to hit it even harder. When, when you're fishing much, much slower, they've got the chance of pecking and letting go because it's less direct and, and they're generally in a less of a, an aggressive feeding mode. So if the water's less than 10 degrees, think about fishing lighter, smaller and slower. If the water is over 10 degrees and you're getting a lot of follows, now this is especially if the water is clear, and by clear I mean really more than about two or three feet of, of clarity, you generally want to speed your lure up. When the water's warmer, their metabolism's warmer, they're generally more aggressive. Uh, and the, the problem that I see a lot of people making when they're getting a lot of follows when the water's warm, you're actually giving the fish too long to inspect the lure. All right, so you might have seen on some of the water wall footage, I study a lot of this, their behavior before, during, and after they, they attack those lures. And you might see this sometimes when you get a pike come up out of nowhere and he actually, he tracks the lure. So this is the lure, he's tracking the lure behind it. And I think they're often using their sense of smell as well, trying to work out what it is. And sometimes you'll see it where he'll actually come up on his side, side by side, where I think he's trying to get a better look at it. So my top tips in those instances are, you have to use the most realistic patterns you've got in your box and you have to speed them up. Now, when I'm looking for a lure that I, I wanna speed up, so a, a classic starter for me on a medium or a medium fast pace is the shad tees, the regular shad tees. Nice deep body in here and a really, really big paddle tail. They're not the best lure for when I'm really looking to kind of burn that lure back to the boat and fish it really quickly. So I tend to move across to something that's a bit slimmer, like the hypo tees. And with all of its brilliant kind of like lifelike fins, it looks really realistic if they're trying to inspect the lure. But also it's got a much smaller paddle tail and it's much slimmer. Also, I use the Shad T Slim. So it's one size down, so that's 16 centimeters. It will come down to a 14 centimeter, slightly smaller paddle tail that you'll see there, 
much thinner lure, much less body roll, and it allows me to fish that lure really, really quick, all right? Sometimes when you're trying to wind these in too quick, the body roll, they end up just sort of going all over the place and it sort of destabilizes slightly. So this is a brilliant lure for anywhere from medium slow to medium quick, but as soon as I'm going super quick, I wanna go across to something with a little bit less body roll uh, and something a little bit skinnier with a, with a smaller paddle tail. Now, the other thing that you want to try and do, where especially if you've got this clear water and you wanna try and avoid those follows, you've got to try and induce a bite away from where you are. And a classic way of doing that is being able to fish uh, uh, a certain speed. So it could be medium, it could be fast, but you've got to put pauses, put more pauses in to your casts than you normally would because those pauses are going to be trigger points. When a pike is following a lure, if he's just swimming along regular, this pike, there's nothing different and, and he sort of gets into almost like a mesmerized state where he's just following it along. You want to get yourself to a stage where you're putting pauses in uh, and sometimes maybe some flicks with the rod tip and it's going to be doing different presentations. You're going to be offering trigger points for those pike and, and even just a tiny flick here or a tiny pause there and it starts dropping down and then picks up again just can really be the difference between that mesmerized pike just following along and him actually thinking, oh, and he just sort of snaps at it just purely out of, out of instinct, I think, a lot of the time. So there you go, guys. A few quick tips on if you're getting those followers. If it's less than 10 degrees, slow down. If it's more than 10 degrees, tend to speed up. Uh, uh, definitely think about changing across to some slightly slimmer lures if you're speeding it up as well. And also, if you're slowing down, think about, like I've got in this hypo tease, I've got a stand-up jig head here. So this actually allows me to slow it down to the point where I drop it down to the bottom and that lure will sit on the bottom at a 45 degree angle and then I can even end up dead sticking. So it's not a, a technique I normally use for pike. I use it a lot for Xander and a lot for perch. But on those days when they're really cold, they're kind of in between, they're a little bit interested, but you're not getting proper aggressive attacks, then, then they can go down and pick it up off the bottom. But make sure you're using really realistic lures because as you slow it down, like I said, you give them the opportunity to look at that lure too much all right so um and then make sure you're changing something in your retrieve as well so put plenty of pauses in plenty of trigger points and try and induce that take away from the boat or away from the bank there you go guys few tips on how to deal with followers hope you enjoyed it until then i'll see you on the next one